Well, hi, everyone out there. Thank you for tuning in to Love at First Laugh, the Green Room Edition. And today I'm so excited because I have a great comedian who is amazing, gorgeous, hilarious, super popular. Uh, she's been on Reno 911, on iCarly. Uh, she tours all over the place, and I love her. So please welcome Arena Voronina. Hi, Hi everyone. Hi, Grace. Thanks so much for having me. <laughs> oh, you're welcome. Thank you for doing the show. I'm so excited that you're here. Two blondes now. We're like I know we're like twinsies, like for real. <laughs> we have the same amount of roots. Uh, have you washed your hair today? Because I haven't. Yeah. I mean, I do wash my hair, just like not every day. We're still in the middle of pandemic. <laughs> yeah. But we're totally we're like twinsies. That's, I know I totally. It. I know, I know. That's that's great. I love it. So uh, there's a lot of people tuning in, and I'm Ooh. sure it's from your camp because you got like gazillion followers, right? Ah, uh, you know, oh <laughs> humble. I got I got some followers. It's just um, most of them followed me for wrong reasons. Oh, uh, because of my boobs and because of my, you know, Playboy past. Mm -hmm. And when I uh, took a U turn and became a comedian, they're like, wow, where's the boobs and bikini photos? And a lot of them kind of like unfollowed. Oh, also. Wow. I, oh, wow. Okay. But I see, I, I, I understand, you know, they're looking for boobs and now they're, you're giving them laughs. So they're confused. They're very confused, but actually, I, I feel like I'm past that transition period, yeah. you know. Yeah. Uh, but at first, it was really rough. It was like, you're not funny. What's with the jokes? We want to see boobs, like straight oh. out, like, oh yeah. <laughs> but now I just don't have to. Girl, worry. that's be you know, apologetic about it. Don't like it. Go away. Exactly. We don't need to be uh, in, nowadays. Who needs to be apologetic? Nobody. We don't need to apologize for shit. This is no. who I am. This is what I'm doing. If you don't like it, there's 10,000 other people that are doing something exactly. that you will like. So, yeah. So that's how I see it. And I love that you you were telling me about Playboy because I was going to ask you, we're not going to talk a lot about Playboy, but I wanted to ask you, how did you transition from like Playboy to stand up? How hard was that? Which you already told me it was, you know, hard. <laughs> no <pun> intended, but. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the apparently, hardships, yeah, the hardships of Playboy Playmate. Yeah, so, apparently yeah. laughter like make does not. It's a boner killer. You know that, right? <laughs> 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 I've had I had a boyfriend that every time we we had, I said something funny. I don't I don't even mean to. I said something stupid, and he was like boner killer. You're killing me. The Stop. same. The same <laughs> here. My husband likes. I I like cracking jokes in bed during the most intimate moments, and. Yes. Uh, <laughs> I think it's out of nervousness because we see the funny in it. And so we, we just have to say it also, like no filter, right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. But that, that that's why they like us, just the way we come <laughs> unfiltered. <laughs> that's right. And blonde with roots. Uh, yep. Yes. Yep. We're very proud of our roots. And curtains don't always match the drapes. I mean, I don't know, I know at this point, but you know, <laughs> you guys. <laughs> Uh, let's go to transitions. How did you transition? Yes. I'm so curious to know. So I modeled for a very long time and, you know, for like being a model and in the modeling world, they really don't like you to talk or have an opinion. It's more like stand over there and look pretty or like smile and don't smile. But I also started acting and I found so much joy, in fact, in working on fully improvised shows with oh. amazing cast. Like I was on Reno 911, which is fully improvised. By the yeah. way, I might just plug it. <laughs> all episodes, all seasons of Reno 911 are now available on Paramount Plus. And I am in season six and season seven lovely i, I love so, yeah. it so it's kind of like a recurring character uh it's different characters but you know um the producers were bringing me back from nice. one season to another and i got to do one right before the pandemic the one that actually aired on quibi and now i believe will be on paramount plus as well um 
Yeah, so transitioning. So I, I did, for example, like I was in the arena of the movie and I was like, I never knew until then that I could be funny. Really? Or that comedy would like become my thing. Yeah. <laughs> it sort of happened that I started getting cast as a funny foreign girl. Like I don't speak English or I speak English with a slick accent. And, um, <laughs> yeah. At some point, I just worked with so many amazingly talented comedians and improvisers that I wanted, I was so inspired to create my own content and just uh, explore comedy. And that's why I started doing stand up. I first, I just wanted to be a better writer. If I yeah. wrote like little comedy skits or YouTube, whatever vlogs, I just wanted them to be funny, like legitimately funny. And that was my motivation. And, um, I discovered that I had a major stage fright and I wanted to push myself on stage because I was so terrified. Like I was so terrified. Like the first probably two years I had to hold my microphone like this oh. or else my hand would be shaking like this. That's so, so hard. <laughs> oh and especially, you know, I'm Latina and when I came, when I started doing comedy, I had an accent. So we become a little bit more self-conscious, right? When you mm -hmm. have an accent, because you're like, I'm going to fuck up a word. I'm going to screw up the. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That too. That yeah. too. Well, if, you know, I go on stage, like in full makeup and hair and looking like a hot chick, like people are just going to assume that I'm not funny. So, uh, mm -hmm. and I started sort of feeling that judgment, like before <laughs> I even opened my mouth, some already like made up their mind so you know that also like motivated me to like work so much harder and write so much better and mm -hmm. just be way more prepared because like any dude can go up and wing it because yeah. he's a dude and then women are judged especially you know like foreign women women of color we're just judged so much more and uh that's why yeah. Yeah, we have to be so much more prepared and just crush it every single time. Totally. Not only because of the accent, because of the cultural differences, uh, but also for some reason, they think that we're like more, they treat us more like sex objects. I don't know if you find yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> it's just really like, oh, Latina. So you am just like, dude, yeah. I'm just a normal person. I just happen yeah. to be Argentina, whatever. Right? Yeah, like, it's not my fault that my boobs are bigger than my head. Like, honestly. <laughs> like, I. I didn't buy my boobs. I was born yeah. like this. Girl. So, and yes. I got in a habit of performing in like hoodies and sweaters. Just please don't look at me because if yes. they start looking at you, they will stop listening. <laughs> yes, I was focusing on your boobs like for 10 uh -huh. minutes. And yep. the first 10 minutes at least, and then they're still focused and they're not going to listen because there's uh -huh. another, part, another part of their brain, well, another brain that's, you know, in motion. So, so yeah, the part of my process as a comedian is to completely desexualize myself in the first few minutes. Like, wow. <laughs> I eat cat food and I'm gross. Okay. And uh, yeah, <laughs> when I know something else, <laughs> I have too many fungus. No, I'm kidding. But you know, that's kind of like what it is. And even if people don't realize that, that's a part of the act. Because right. by the time I get to talking about Playboy and talk, talking about, you know, modeling, mm -hmm. everyone already knows I'm funny and they pay attention. So, they don't let you know. so, so you craft your set where you before in the beginning you talk about, I don't know, being from Russia or whatever. And no. then you go into Playboy. You don't start with Playboy because then people are going to assume no. that. Yeah, like, oh, she's oh Playboy. Oh, so you, you have to change the way you dress, which is so... Because female comedians, yeah. that's what we do. We wear like jeans and a t shirt and hide yeah. our assets because it, it's just, we don't want them to focus on that. No. So, uh, I know. Well, of course, like if I were like taping something, I would dress up a little bit. Or like if I'm doing like a big, you know, like I don't know, feature yeah. show in Vegas, like I would just dress a little nicer, but still, I wouldn't be going like, you know, hey, girls. Oh, <laughs> totally <laughs> Yeah. And, you know, some girls can pull it off and they, there is no disconnect for them and it's a part of their act. But for exactly. me, I just need to dress down and like hide. <laughs> no, totally. I agree. Cause you're super hot and you did Playboy. So people, it's just, I, I get it. I get it. So what propelled you to do stand up? Was it because, you know, like you said, um, 
you were around comedians and, and then you were like, oh, I, I want to do this. Is there like growing up, did you ever think that you were going to do comedy? No. No. <laughs> Uh, growing up in the middle of nowhere in Russia, I had dreams of becoming a model and I had dreams of becoming an actress, but those dreams had nothing to do with living in Hollywood and, you know, living really? your dream. And I never even thought I would leave Russia. Uh, it was just, you know, yeah. I, it somehow happened because I did become a model. <laughs> I was oh, given an opportunity, yeah, to travel the world and follow my dreams but yeah to be honest like comedian was definitely not on the list of dreams even. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah who would do that to themselves yeah I want to be a broadcast comedian yes um yeah. <laughs> want to do that uh so yeah you kind of like stumbled upon it which is great um same here I did um stumble upon it kind of uh so but I never dreamed about being a comedian so uh I actually want to show a clip. Let me, um, this one woman production here. Uh, da -da. Let me share screen because I want people to see how funny you are. Oh, my listeners, you. of course, you are hilarious. Okay, let me see if I, let me focus on this. <laughs> I'm a little, okay, application window. Yay, I got it. Okay, here it is. All right, let's roll this. <laughs> And your current president. <laughs> You're welcome. When I came to the States, I didn't speak very good English. I didn't know what ADD, STD, DUI meant until I got one of each. And I actually came here to work as a model. And on my very first photo shoot, photographer goes, Hey, Irina, do you want to pose for a Playboy? And I'm like, oh my God, you mean like fully naked? That's just insulting. It pays $25,000. I meant to say inspiring. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Inspiring. Yes, of course. Was it the money that really convinced you to to do um, Playboy or? Did yes, you ever... of course. <laughs> <laughs> it's a true story. Uh, this joke kind of like tells it all. I never planned on moving to America either. That was not on my dreams list. I loved living in Europe. Um, in Switzerland, in fact, I modeled in Italy, I traveled, and I came here for a photo shoot. And the photographer was literally like, do you want to pose for Playboy? I'm like, who, me? Why would they like me? <laughs> and uh, I was just like, not thinking that would ever happen. And I went for an interview and literally that same week, I got put in a Playboy mansion to shoot a test and then the centerfold. And then they sent me back to Europe so I could figure out the working papers because they knew they liked me. They just couldn't publish me or like officially give me a month until I get some kind of visa to work in the States. Exactly. I know, I know how that goes. I <laughs> yeah. So that's, that's the story. And it only took me a year and a half to get a visa. So they shot everything in like in 1999 and 2000, but I didn't get published till January of 2001. How exciting. How did your family react? Your mom, because I know you have a lot of sketches about your mom on TikTok. Yeah. <laughs> um, at that point, you know, like I've been independent and I, been living by myself since I don't know 18 17 mm -hmm. and uh yeah I started making money in modeling I mean every parent should be proud I guess Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. I once had to do um in a theater scene I was uh in in lingerie and my mom went to see me and my dad had passed away and she goes 
Raciel, I'm so happy your father is dead because he would not have liked this. I <laughs> 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 was happy my dad was dead. Yes. Um, so I know that's why I asked you because moms, you know, um, yeah, foreign moms are different, aren't they? Yeah. Well, you know, my mom is, she's proud also. I love it. She can't say she's not proud because I've been supporting her ever since I started making money, which is like <laughs> for the last 25 years. So <laughs> you can't bite the hand that feeds you. Like, what is, it? what is it on your picture? Naked boobs? But mom, like those boobs, they, you know. They, they, they send you money every month. So exactly. They bought you this house. So <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> uh, so uh, I, I wanted to ask you also about stand up per se. Uh, I'm always curious about how uh, people prepare to go up on the stage because we're mm -hmm. all different. Some people get nervous and people don't get nervous. So how do you prep to go up on the stage? Do you have any rituals or anything you do? Mm -hmm. You know, it's been really weird for like probably the first four or five years of comedy. I would always plan out my set. Yeah. Like, let's say I have seven minutes. I would write out my seven minutes. Like, I know exactly what I could like cut for time and work, know exactly where I'm going to end. And the more I do comedy, I'm realizing that this is such a wrong approach. Yes to comedy like it's not about how many jokes you can squeeze into five or ten minutes it's about connecting and just connecting and being in the moment sort of i used to just like prepare to a t memorize my set run up there and just do it now my preparation is about paying attention to the show trying to you know do some callbacks and other people's jokes uh, get to know your audience, try to connect with them in the first, you know, two minutes. Yeah. And then, you know, maybe I'll do a couple of jokes, maybe not. So it's different. I feel like maybe I entered the next step of being a comic where it's more about the audience and not so much about me and my preparation. It's about just connecting and making everyone to have fun including myself <laughs> absolutely i love that that's key to stand-up comedy you have to have fun yes it's like it's like your party and you're the alpha dog there and you prepped you know you wrote jokes you you talk about you expose yourself literally we expose do you find like you expose yourself more doing stand-up than let's say playboy 100 percent. yes mm -hmm. <laughs> it's, it's a one woman show you were yeah. it doesn't get more naked than that you're exposing your soul <laughs> your soul exactly the body is easy the soul not that easy um but here look who we have two of uh, my oh, best marty hi oh, marty <laughs> i just saw marty the other day yeah i saw him. yes yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love him. He's he's great. Um, I love here we him. have, uh, let's see. Oh, Joe, thank you. He says, said it before and I'll say it again. I applaud men and women who can get on stage and be funny on command. Oh, thank you, thank Joe. You. That's very sweet. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, we, we have balls. You think we have balls? <laughs> <laughs> we have lots of balls. We have a lot of balls. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> Uh, let's see here, Joe. Comedy is about escape and laughter. Women with a sense of humor is sexy. All the mm, okay, okay, Joe. Thank you. Because some men, thank you, Joe. Some men <laughs> find find funny women intimidating. Like when I go on dates, they feel they have to be funny, or like that they're They find me intimidating sometimes, which I'm like, what? Yeah, like it's How? not a competition. Thank Relax. you. <laughs> and your husband is super supportive. He is. He's the oh, best. Sweet. I probably wouldn't be still doing comedy if it wasn't for him. Because, Aww. like, yeah, in the past, like, I would date men that instead of encouraging me to pursue something or, like, become better at something, they would be like, oh, there's no way you could do that kind of thing. And there's no way you can be as good as the next person. So my husband, like, even when I was terrible, when I was starting out, and I was super nervous. Like, Aww. it was never like a discouraging sentence. It's more like, I'm so proud of you for doing this. Oh my God. And, yeah. And that's how okay. like, I got here. Yeah, <laughs> here we are six years later and he's Aww. just more proud every day. Does he have a brother? No. <laughs> 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 this interview is over. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> no, I got a good one. He is the no, best I'm, person out there. 
one in a, in a gazillion. Uh, so Nate here, this has been uh, one great and entertaining interview. I can't stop laughing. Thank you, Nate. Oh, thank you, Nate. Nice That's to meet you. Good to see you on here. So sweet. Thank you. Um, so also, I, I always ask my, my guests about writing because I'm always curious about the writing process because we're all different, right? The way we write. Mm -hmm. How is your writing process for a bit or, or mm -hmm. whatever, a sketch? How, how do you, you know, what's your writing process for either one? So let's say for a bit, I write everything I know, then I try to condense it and sort of first, the truth has to come first, right? You have to kind of like understand what the truth of your bit is for yourself. And so other people can follow, <laughs> like even my cat food bit, like it's been rewritten so many times because I understood that at some point people wouldn't follow and I need them to stay with me <laughs> for the entire few minutes. Yes. Um, um yeah so i write what i know then i try to find some organic punchlines right because mm -hmm. it doesn't have to be like a fabricated punchline no. it could be just your truth which is sometimes much funnier than <laughs> than like all kinds of punchlines and then it's about condensing mm -hmm. it's like right now, yeah yeah i'm working on a set about um growing up in soviet russia with no female sanitary, feminine sanitary products. Oh my and God. It started, it was like 10 minutes and now it's five. And now I'm sort of at a point, well, maybe I cut it too short, but then mm -hmm. who wants to talk about periods for more than five minutes? Maybe nobody, so. Totally. And you gotta go to the ones, the tags or whatever that work, that really, really work, that A. Mm -hmm. So you have five minutes of A stuff versus 10 yeah. minutes of, B plus or you know a yeah minus. and and like yeah. you'd be surprised like when I was starting out as a comic I'd be like five minutes set what can I do in five minutes right <laughs> but now it's like that challenges you just to bring like whatever you got in five minutes so now it's more like well ten minutes stuff means like I have to do old material <laughs> you know yeah. <laughs> so it it's all good like I appreciate five minutes sets now so much more. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, how do you have like an probably more than an hour, right? Have you ever done? No, like no I'm working on my first hour, okay. and realistically, I probably have forty five minutes right now. That's but then cool. You going through like, oh, this is kind of getting old. <laughs> then Trump is like Trump, and I need new stuff, so maybe I should do ten minutes on periods. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I know. Maybe I should write something new. I'm not sure. <laughs> as I, as I, I don't know about you, but as I keep writing stuff, my new stuff is actually better a lot of times. So I'm like, I, I just leave some jokes out of my, and then I, I look at them and I'm like, they're not bad. And I revamp them. Do you do that? Yes. 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 I've been doing that too. Yeah. It's just so hard because like we, our gauge of our own material is yeah. like so weird just because like I've been doing like same joke for like, I don't know, last two months. It's old to me and it's not interesting. But then for other people that never seen you before, like, they're like, oh my God, this is your best joke ever. <laughs> yeah, it's so hard to gauge your own material, like especially yeah. with Zoom shows. Oh my God. It's like you have to scroll. That's I. <laughs> That's what I do. I scroll and it's like, oh, you, let's see, you're unmuted. Let me ask you a question. You know, it's like, yeah, you do yeah. work. it's it's just so weird. And then people mute themselves because, you know, there's stuff going yeah. on in their place. And so they don't want the noise to yeah. upset. They're them. just being respectful because their dog is barking, you know, and you're like, <laughs> they're still laughing, but you're like, yeah. so silent. I know. What is this? <laughs> I know sometimes I've had in, in Zoom shows where people are talking like, what do you want? What is it like a whole conversation? And they're trying to look and see who it is and mute them. You know, <laughs> they're, they're very interesting. It's, it's mm -hmm. kind of like a different form of heckling. It's like unaware of being, you know, them heckling you because they don't know that they're, you know, uh, unmuted. So uh, let's see. Here we have, I wanted to show, okay, here, Howard. How sweet. Uh, loving Irina's stories and how she got where she is today. Love her laugh. Oh, thank you, Howard. Thank you, Howard. I love it. 
So That's here's cool. Nate. Let's see. I have a question for Irina. Have you ever had any bad experiences on stage during one of your comedy gigs? Oh my God, Nate, you read uh, That was the next question. What was your best set? <laughs> <laughs> best set and worst set? Yes. Oh, gosh, it's so hard. I'm usually very well prepared, so I never felt like I had like a terrible, like I bombed completely. Mm -hmm. But there were probably like a couple times where like realistically I did bomb. <laughs> it's just different. It Every show is different. You know, yeah. it's everybody's dream to perform in front of two or three hundred people sold out, you know, comedy club. But when you are starting out and just toning your craft, like you find yourself performing in front of 12 strangers at the bar. Yeah. And that sometimes might, might be a great show too. You connect with the audience and you get all your jokes. Um, like it's just every show is so different in yeah. our industry. Every room, every Zoom room is different. So I would say there's no bad shows though. I had a couple where um, I felt like I bombed, maybe even if I didn't, like I did a show in Laughlin um, in front of a couple hundred people where like they cut my mic because what? I was under impression I was booked as a feature and I was doing 15 minutes. They were under impression I was booked as a host and I was doing 10 minutes. Oh. And I just literally, like, I just said hello to everybody, blah, blah, blah. We're going to have a great night and just did a couple of jokes. And I'm like, I didn't come to Laughlin to do 10 minutes. But what? casinos, wow. exactly. So casinos are very strict about getting people back, you know, on the floor and gambling. So the sound person decided that that was my time and he cut my mic. And then I had to go back up there and host the show. And I was like, OMG. OMG. Yeah. Because it's a whole and different then, show, you know, that's yeah, a and, different thing to MC than to feature. Mm -hmm. So it, it was, you know, obviously a mistake on the booking part of yeah, the booker, who also came in late and literally let me know. He started the show late because he was late and let me know two minutes before I went on stage that I'm hosting. Mm -hmm. And I was under the impression that I was featuring. Yeah, and that's... I was like, I'm never going back there again. And it was, I, it was kind of like, I mean, I didn't break down, but you know, Brian yeah. Kiley was really awesome because he was the headliner. He was like, you did great. You know, it's like, yeah. it's a tough room. It's a weird crowd. It's Laughlin. And obviously he, he carried the show and like he killed it and we all had a good time. <laughs> but yeah, that was probably like the most traumatizing experience mm -hmm. for me. Cause like, yeah. like I went that to that shit hall to have my mic cut off on me. <laughs> Excuse my French. Yeah. But, um, yeah. What doesn't, yeah. That's yeah. What doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Absolutely. Oh, stand up, of course. Absolutely. Do you do shitty bars and stuff? I used to. I remember I used to do shitty bars just to get stronger. To feel. Yeah. Yeah. Know. Oh, I used to go to like open mics. I used to think that. In order for me to do and bring a show at the comedy store, I needed to go to at least two mics the night before. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I would find myself in like East LA at 10 p.m. at some coffee shop or whatever. And now I'm yeah. like, why am I doing it to myself? I could have just like bought a microphone and performed in front of the mirror, which would have probably been a better outcome. But oh my God. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. Mics <laughs> are like the worst. <laughs> so yeah, the goals are to do less shitty shows, especially now with Zoom. Like it's a little spoiling. Like you can go mm -hmm. in a Mic without uh, you can visit an open mic, you know, without having to leave your house, and also like now I'm being offered like, oh, do you want to do a live show in San Diego? I'm like, in oh, no. San Diego, no. what does it pay? <laughs> like, yeah, no, I don't want to do a live show. In fact, in San Diego or oh, Laughlin, I mean, I have nothing against San Diego, and I'm grateful, but it's like unless I'm featuring at the comedy store you know, mm -hmm. in La Jolla and getting yes. paid, like, what's the point? There's no point. Now, I think as comedians, we realized how much we traveled. Mm -hmm. Some shows were great and other shows were shit. And, yeah. and like you said, you know, we don't know who, which ones are going to be good and which ones are not. So it's yeah. a gamble. But now that we're doing Zoom, I read an article the other day that, there's going to actually be the clubs are going to do half zoom and half uh live shows so the zoom trend is here to stay 
Yeah, yeah, no, for sure. And it's great. It's great. You can get more grounds covered. And I'm sure my fans from the East Coast and like the middle America, they appreciate that I was able to do Zoom shows and they were able actually to see me perform. Yes, absolutely. And you can you have people from other countries, you know, anybody. Yep. So that's yep. super cool. So it's a whole different experience. And they were saying that, for example, if let's say you go to, I don't know, San Diego, right? Um, if you're going to do a Zoom show where they don't allow people from San Diego, so the people from San Diego are going to go to see you live. I mean, it's so weird. Like they're <laughs> like figuring all this stuff out. And so I think the Zoom culture is here to stay. I think so too. And, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's great. Like, I'm not saying we needed the pandemic, but, you know, we've come a long way. And I think our industry needed it because yes. it's so much easier for comics and we can expand our audience and we can make, you know, fans. Absolutely. Uh, and we can compliment. New, make new fans. Yeah, absolutely. Make new fans and then we can complement whatever we do live with podcasts like this, you know, being guests on other podcasts and getting your audience to interact with you like they're doing today. So it's a whole, I think it's a whole different world and it's actually better, I feel. Yes, for sure. And, you know, some people, oops, wow, I'm just playing with my light here. I, I just feel like there's. Oh, no. Over, <laughs> yeah. oh no. Oh, my God. What happened to you? But yeah, yeah, this is like the beauty of the ring light. Hello. We yes. all have our secrets. There's there there's there are comics who have been able to adapt. Mm -hmm. and who have written a new hour of material and uh, you know doing just pandemic has not stopped them and yeah. there are comedians who just oh zoom show suck i want to do live comedy only it's like get, look if you if mm -hmm. you love what you do and if you want to uh stay true to your craft it doesn't matter if you're doing it live or on zoom or a combination of both like you can be working out every night if you wanted to on Zoom. Absolutely, and not leave your home. That's the beauty mm -hmm. of it. All you need is some good lighting, that's it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> don't buy <laughs> shitty ring light, everyone. Or just If you don't have one, you might look like 20 years older. So yeah, that, that's the secret. I kind of like the pink blue one. That's pretty cool. <laughs> I really like it. Um, so have you ever wanted to quit where you were like, screw this, I'm not doing it. And if you did, how did you keep going? So right shortly after I started doing comedy, I created my own show with my friend Sabra May. It was called Comedy Stew and it was all female lineup and it went on for five and a half years. Nice. We used to do bi-monthly and then monthly show at Bar Lubitsch. And that's probably just having that show. And even though I wanted to quit a few times, but um, Sabra wouldn't let me. <laughs> she's like this is the best thing we have going for us <laughs> yes. um having that show i think kept me just going mm -hmm. even if i didn't write anything new I, I would still you know had to host and i had to get up and i had to do a set um that's what kept me alive so i didn't have to depend mm -hmm. on other people to give me stage time or like fight for stage time. Yeah. And I was always able to film myself because there's a lot of people who produce shows at the like comedy clubs, but then like you have to either buy tape or you're not allowed to film inside of the comedy store yes. or laugh factory. So just because I was able to sort of do my material and tape myself, that's what kept me motivated. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Love at First Laugh is actually the live show. This is the Green Room Edition podcast, but it's a live show. And you you did a couple of my shows um, in, at Flappers. Flappers. Yeah. yeah, for like, I think I did it for six, seven years. And yes, absolutely. It's like, even if I wanted to quit, you're so right. It's like, I have to do it because I committed to doing this and, you know, giving other female comics or, you know, the opportunity to be on the stage and work out their stuff. So, yeah, it was kind of like a commitment that that uh, an outside commitment, but it really pushes you to continue because yeah. Yeah. I feel like a lot of us do have that. Like, you know, you can't get out. It's almost like a trap. <laughs> yeah, well, it's it's sort of the discipline. Like you have shows booked in advance. So, you know, yeah. like, well, yeah, I'm not going to quit within the next two months. <laughs> <So> <laughs> might as well write new jokes. <laughs> I know. 
It's I, I feel like it's a trap, but it's a fun trap. It's a fun trap. And yeah. I'm grateful for it because I think like in the first two or three years I, of me doing stand up, I was still doing a lot of modeling and and I was working for Playboy. Um, like I would still do Playboy events, wear Playboy bunny suit. And I didn't necessarily promote myself as a comedian because yeah. Like even on my social, it was all bikini photos and Playboy photos. Uh, but the reason for it was I just didn't feel like I was strong enough to like come out and let the world know. So everything happened organically. By the time I did, I was already confident that I'm good enough for the world to accept me as a comedian. And, you know, I had TV credits too. So yeah. that's great. Absolutely. Everything always works out for some reason, you know? Like we stress out and, and I find the older I get, it's like the more like, yeah, it's all going to work out. It looks like shit right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, I'm not worried. <laughs> exactly. Like, I think like when you get older, it's just, you can give lesser fucks for less fucks I, given for whatever. Totally, girl, I'm out of fucks to give. And my, my fuck <laughs> jar is empty completely. It's been empty for quite a while. Yeah. Who cares? Just have fun, Here's right? That. Have fun, exactly. Man. Yeah, used to that. Yeah, <laughs> thinking too much is not fun. Uh, mm -hmm. So, do you have any role models or comics that you look up to? Like, I don't know really. Um, there's a lot of comics I love and respect. Um, I love and respect comedians who you know lift up other comics. You know, mm -hmm. like Tiffany Haddish when she got her Netflix special, she brought all of her girls and be like. You yes. got it. I'm going to put you on. And yes. I think this is what's what's that is all about, because some comics, they're a little jealous of other comedians. They're not necessarily oh, yeah. looking to make friends. And there's a whole other breed of comics that uplift the others. Yeah. Like you. I don't, I, that's what we do. Yeah. Yes. I don't think comedy is a competition. Like our right. stories are so unique that I don't feel threatened by other women or by yep. other comics. I actually want all of us to succeed. And yeah. I want all of us to become better performers and write better jokes. So Agreed. I think, and I don't want to say I'm my own role model, but I appreciate people who have that same, you know, set of mind about Absolutely. it. Absolutely. I know Tiffany is, is such a sweetheart. She is a wonderful person. And, and uh, yeah, that's what we need to do. You know, whenever we get a break, it's like, I'm, I'm going to have my friends audition first, you know? <laughs> yeah. So absolutely. Uh, so uh, let's talk about social media because I'm fascinated. Cause you <laughs> have, like, I'm, I mean, I'm obsessed, like 4 million followers. What the fuck? Uh, how? I know it's the boobs, but you have still 4 million that stayed without the yeah. boobs, right? So, I, and then you have like 226,000 on tiktok, TikTok. yeah oh yeah. god i haven't posted on tiktok in a while i need to <laughs> <laughs> so uh social media i started social media at the birth of social media mm -hmm. we're talking 2008 i think um in 2008 i was a same poly beer spokesmodel i was a same poly girl for the whole year and uh they made me a facebook for whatever PR reasons. So my actually current profile, personal profile was made by St. Paul Girl people. And then uh, I created a page when the pages first came out because people started hitting 5,000 friend limit. And that's when Facebook right. rolled out a feature of a page. Mm -hmm. And back then, you know, Facebook, it was free for all. As long as you post something every day, you will grow. And yeah. I organically grew, I don't know, to like three, whatever million. And then, then it, Facebook bought Instagram and, you know, then Trump won the election and free for all was over. <laughs> like people stopped growing. <laughs> Social media went to crap. <laughs> like <laughs> now, now, now it's really, I mean, you can still, I guess, organically grow on Facebook, but like Instagram, forget about it. It's just pay for play unless you manually adding people every day you do your own follow on follow who, who wants to yeah. do that well it's too much work yeah it's yeah. just yeah and and you know as comedians we meet so many people and we network a lot so you always have people following you yeah so yeah it's pretty organic i think for us um here is a question from nate 
Uh, he says, before you got into comedy and modeling, did you ever do any sports? No, Nate, I have to disappoint <laughs> you. <laughs> I might have very broad shoulders, but I like barely know how to swim. And I don't play tennis. I'm a terribly coordinated person. Um, yeah, no sports for me. But I grew up like in a small town in Russia and the sports our sports was drinking and smoking, you know, stealing your mom's cigarettes at the age of 14 and buying some vodka and drinking it on some staircase. And that, that was our, my teenage years. That's too funny. Because fun. there was no smartphones. There was nothing else to do. Your country was going to shit. And mm -hmm. this is how we coped with it. Like, yeah, the 90, early 90s children of Soviet Russia. <laughs> oh my God. Uh, here we have Jamie, he's saying the Zoom shows, let us rabbit Irina fans get our fix. Yay. Hi, Jamie. <laughs> Jamie made it to a few. Jamie is actually a dear friend and we've been friends for a very long time. Jamie started following me on Facebook and Instagram probably like 10 years ago or more. And yeah, Jamie's amazing. And we got to meet in person too a couple of times. He came to Los Angeles and actually be, right before pandemic, he came to one of my shows, I think in 2019, which was great. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, Jamie was able to support me at a couple of comedy competitions. Oh, that's so sweet. That is very, thank you, Jamie, for supporting Irina. Um, so here's Nate again, who doesn't love vodka. <laughs> love vodka. <laughs> Actually, Nate, I quit drinking vodka when I was 19 because I couldn't drink anymore. Like, oh I goodness. was done. <laughs> I was like, I can't drink this anymore. But, I mean, I still would drink, just not vodka, like, in shots straight up, non-refrigerated with that's, no taser. Girl, that's crazy. If I, if I drink, I can only drink red wine. Anything else, it's like... Yeah, I have stories, but we're not going to go into that now. <laughs> it's like, it's not. I'm with you. I can't even drink anymore. I'm, yeah. that's it. Like, I've hit the age where I have this <laughs> much and I'm such a cheap date. I'll pass yeah, like, out. Same here. Two glasses of wine. That's it. Because anything over that, not good. Uh, yeah, I might end up dancing on a table on my date. But uh, here, <laughs> <laughs> we don't want that. Uh, not for free. Uh, so, Grace, today's show with Irina feels like we're sitting around a table after dinner, sipping vodka, enjoying each other's company, hoping the evening never ends. Oh, thank you. this is fun. Cheers, Howard. What, what are you drinking? I'm glad we made you feel that way. And we are totally hanging out. <laughs> it's just another day, <laughs> another Sunday. Exactly. Um, so... I, let's see. I wanted to actually, I have the link here for your TikTok. Uh, which one is your favorite? Let me go to <laughs> <laughs> the ones where I impersonate Trump. My oh my God. Was probably like Trump me meets Corona. I, I woke up in the middle of the night. I looked at my phone and, and I saw that Trump got infected. And I was oh like, OMG, like I have to write something tonight. Oh my God. But Stop literally, me. I mean, just pick. I don't know. I, whatever. Yeah, let's see. <laughs> I love the, your mom ones. Is this one? Ah, uh, sure. Yeah, it's short. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay. Hello. Wait, why is TikTok there? Okay. Oh, I have to Ooh. log in. Oh my god. It doesn't okay. want to play. Yeah, it doesn't want to play unless I'm logged in. Okay, my bad. It's okay. Well, it's okay. you guys can look it up yourself. How about that? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry about that. I mean, I wish I had like another producer here that would help me. I know. With shit. With tech. Uh, yeah, because I have to think, you know, I have to like read my interview, talk to you, look at the comments, then try to share screen. And of course, I forgot to log into TikTok and I have no idea what my password is. And we're not going to go there. But yes, please uh, watch her videos on TikTok. They're hilarious. Uh, it's it's I am Irina Voronina, right? That's yes. your... Okay. Yes. Thanks, Excellent. guys. I promise I will be back to TikTok. It's just um, I got a real job and I actually worked 100 hours in the last two weeks 
Oh That's my how God. many hours I worked at my job. So my TikTok is on hold right now. And some of well, you yeah. know what the job is. So <laughs> That's that's it's why it's it's been yeah it's been yeah. taking a little bit of a creative toll on me but i'll of be course. back i don't like, i don't plan on working 100 hours like 50 hours a week in the near future but this was a very important period uh, for like yeah get things off the ground that you needed to do that's totally yeah. cool hey there's the season for everything in life right Yep. And again, everything always works out, which is the beauty of life. Uh, so how did you find your niche for TikTok? Like, how did you know what was going to hit? Because a lot of people are, always wonder, you know, what you really don't with you TikTok. Don't. You're, you just have to try everything. And I think the key is consistency, which is mm -hmm. like right now. <laughs> I'll be <laughs> like the first one. If somebody asks me about like how how to TikTok, what the, should they they should do i would be the first one to say consistency is the key post three times a day oh, <laughs> here i am like once oh. a day but okay once a day when i started tiktok i was yeah. posting twice a day for two months and that was during the pandemic period right like i started in may and june july and then in september i think one of my videos got like very viral I had nice. videos that got to like a million views before yeah. in non-English speaking countries, like me showcasing my bra was like a viral video in Turkey and Arab Emirates. And I'm sure they're wonderful people, but you know, if, if, if 99% of your audience are overseas, you're not going to get any advertisement dollars. So oh, I started, that's when I started focusing. I'm like, I need to do English speaking content and write skits mm -hmm. instead of just like showcasing my bra and my dirty laundry. <laughs> and the video was like, and accidentally went viral was the Russian mom uh, got like 7.6 million now. Oh my God. The one yeah. I again? Oh no, it's another Not one. that one, it's but the million, very yeah. first original. And it was really weird. Like kind of like, I didn't think it was that good. I didn't think it was that funny. I kind of wrote it and it was like on my back burner in yeah. drafts. And one Sunday morning, I just woke up, edited it, posted it. By the time my husband and I uh, drove from the house to the container store, it was like by two on two million views in like a couple hours, in, in an hour. And it kept climbing, climbing, nice. climbing. So literally like one viral video will get you 90% of your followers. That's right. Yeah, because yeah, they're gonna click. Yeah, I'm addicted to TikTok, by the way. That's well, I have to find you. My crack. Oh no, I'm addicted to watch on TikTok. I watch it. You, you don't you don't create yet. No, I'm still trying to figure out what I want to do. It doesn't matter. Just do it. Just do you it. Right. Post your stand-up clips as long as they have you know captions and titles. They'll do great. Um, do just short vlogs are the best if you have a strong point of view about something like yeah. well oh my god i just went to target and you would not believe what happened so like you have to catch them in the first two three seconds so they don't scroll and totally yes because they they lose me some of them lose me it's mm -hmm, like mm -hmm. yeah but you're a writer you're an amazing writer you know you're a stand up you can just have strong opinions about stuff and post it every day and people will love it. Like you, you'll find your audience organically. That's the beauty about TikTok. I, I will follow your advice. Thank you, Arena, for encouraging me. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I'm kind of like cautious. I'm like a little cat, you know, like cautious and then I'll jump, but yeah. Okay. I'll jump. <laughs> you, you, you jump. Oh, oh, here's another trick. Here's another trick. You, you yes. can, you can start recording your videos and you can be saving them in drafts. And yes. once you have like 10 drafts, you can start releasing them, you know, one by one. So you don't feel pressured like you have to film every day. And then you'll you'll be like, I'll, on Mondays, I will film like for the week. I'll film like five videos. But, you know, it's they don't need to be longer than 20 seconds. That's the thing. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. The, the longer you go, the yeah, the, the more you lose people. views you'll get. So, yeah, like 10, 15, 20 seconds and you can bust them out and you'll you'll do great thank you you're so sweet thank you uh and and 
that's why people love you. Look, Carlos is Irina. I adore you. Aww. Oh, hi, Carlos. Thank you. He spelled my name in Russian. That's so sweet. I know. Aww. And I think that, I, I think that was her name. <laughs> it, sound, it wasn't Irina. It was Irina. <laughs> Irina. Okay, what else? <laughs> Irina. That's that's Irina. the Spanish version. Uh, here, oh, here, uh, Nate. He says, "I can only imagine Irina Voronina and Grace Fraga doing a TikTok video together." <laughs> oh, we just might because you we know we, we can do it remotely. Yeah, like we don't yes. ever need to be in the same room. <laughs> Absolutely, I love those duets. Have you ever done duets? Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. They're, they're fun. Not- it's just the duets I want to do. They're not going to get the views because you're supposed to duet um, like videos that already or already went viral already, no absolutely yeah. yeah so you like go like the guy that's dancing like the yeah that one is like everybody is duetting with him yeah no i get it yeah. i've been watching like yeah. hours like really i think i have a problem <laughs> well, that's it. the thing you you've done you're doing your research to start yeah, that's your what I'm doing. channel and uh you know what the trends are and mm-hmm. you know what content is out there so literally it's only a matter of time until it clicks with you and you're like this is what i'm gonna do this is the kind of content i'm gonna put out and duets are great it's just i never had a duet do well really because you would yeah. think more followers maybe like I don't know. Really? The, the, the things I want to do it, they're not necessarily the most viral ones. And okay. on the other hand, there's some people who that's all they do. They just do ah. stitches and duets. And yeah. Uh, they, they, yeah, they find their audience somehow. I don't know. It's just like TikTok is really weird. I feel like once one of your videos goes viral, TikTok thinks this is all you can do. So. Mm-hmm. Okay. The only things that do well for me are sketches where I'm speaking and playing characters and doing green screen. And if I'm doing something else, even if it's a big trend, somehow algorithm doesn't pick it up. It doesn't work for you. It's funny how we have to be also like stats person, you know, when we're doing our own social media. Like I'm always looking at the stats. What works? What doesn't work? What do you yeah, do? Yeah. What? It's like we have to do so much, but it's great yes. because we have control over it. Yeah. Way, Sometimes you because... think it's the fun- yes, you think it's the funniest thing and it doesn't do well. <laughs> and that's kind of like prevents you from doing more of that even though it yes. might do well in the future. But yeah, like some people just wing it and they they don't care about analytics. They just do it for fun. But I'm, you know, I'm a Russian spy. I have to analyze everything. <laughs> <laughs> I analyze the heck out of it. Uh, yeah, That's before I funny. post something similar. I love it. Uh, look at Marty. I love Marty. Where is Marty here? This has been a wonderful show. Oh, thank Yay. you, Marty. I love him. We talk a lot, like like once or twice a week. We're like, Aww. yeah, yeah. <laughs> we don't, but we will be. <laughs> yeah. And we'll go for lunch very often. I know. I, I used to do that, too, with him, like once every six months or so. Yeah, we've got <laughs> that's what Marty and his friends do. We go to lunch with him. Mm-hmm. Irene yeah. and Grace, you're super hilarious. Thank you, Irving. Thank you so much. Thank you. I love Irving. Thank you, Irvin. I love you. Um, uh, yeah, let's see. Uh, what else? I'm trying to look for. I see if I covered everybody. I'm sorry, guys, if I didn't cover everybody because it's kind of hard to do it all. Once I have a producer like looking through the comments, I will be able to um, to do it. Um, but okay, here, vodka and smokes too funny. Yeah. That is, that <laughs> is so. we should do a sketch about that yeah growing up in russia and then you, but you know what's funny like the russian kids of like right now of the you know the 18 the 20 year olds they're so freaking opinionated like every time Ooh. i post something russian they're like well this is not how it is in russia or this is not how you know but i'm like uh, well, it was when I was growing up in the 80s. I was born in 77, so don't tell me nothing. And yeah, that's it's it's so funny. I imagine, but the thing is, once you post something uh, controversial, yes, that starts a conversation. 
and boosts your engagement through the roof. So, <laughs> yes. but you that's have to do the negative yeah. comments, right? Yeah. You oh, yeah. To, so that's the thing. That. I posted thing about vaccine and how great vaccine is and how happy I am that I got vaccinated and that got less, like a lot of views only because all anti-vaxxers are like, um, well, you're going to die. And like, what, look, when you're going to grow a tail in two years, well, let's <laughs> see how long you're going to smile for. So I was like, oh my God. Yeah. And trolls. I'm just that gonna... I noticed the vaccine and the anti-vaccine is like going on like very heavily on uh, TikTok. That's another mm -hmm. thread that's huge. Mm -hmm. Yes. I'm still waiting to see, <laughs> you know, because I'm cautious. I'm like I told like I'm like a lion, you know, like shh, and then attack. So yes. yeah, waiting to see. So did you get which one did you get, if you don't mind me? I asking? got Pfizer. And nothing. You were fine. The second um, dose. I the second dose. I had fever for about twenty four hours. Okay, Actually, yeah. I got second dose last Monday. Okay. And I'm still, like I I'm, I just finally got back to normal. But it was yeah. a little rough. Like I, you really? know, I had fever for twenty four hours, and I don't ever get fever. And I had to take uh, Tylenol and like stay in bed all day, like cancel everything. Because after the first shot, I felt nothing. And yeah. I didn't think I would have any kind of reaction, but look, antibodies are not going to build themselves, right? So I'm not going to be mad at that. Absolutely. No, I, I believe in vaccines, you know, I absolutely. They help your immune system recognize what they need to fight for sure. But I'm still waiting. <laughs> so <laughs> like, I'm waiting on the vaccine too. I don't know what's going to come first, TikTok or vaccine, but stay <laughs> I think <laughs> doing this on the TikTok for a longer time than the vaccine. Vaccine, I just started, it, you know. So uh, so we've been going for an hour. Oh my gosh, this is so much fun. I love this. And look I at uh, Todd. Is that is that your husband? Yes, that's my husband. Oh. <laughs> oh my, oh my, my husband God. lost me. Uh, over the summer, he lost me to TikTok. Oh my God. Yeah. And now he lost me to a day job, which also like sometimes a night job. So oh, he's no. like, yeah, I got to start a TikTok because my wife is just nowhere to be found. Oh, <laughs> I'm here, honey, in another room. I'll be back soon. <laughs> yeah, we're almost done, Todd. Thank you for interacting with us. Uh, I love this. Louis Arlen Epstein. Uh, I wasn't going to get a vaccine, but now that I know it grows a tail, I'm all in. Yes. That was <laughs> awesome. I have enough tails. Show me yours. I'll show you mine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hey, something new. <laughs> it's good. Uh, so this is, let me ask you the last question that I always ask all my guests. What do you want to be known for? I want to be known for my comedy and lifting other people up for not being a downer and just being a ray of sunshine in somebody's day. Oh, and you are, you are all sunshine. Oh. Yeah, you have a beautiful energy. How are you, Grace? Thank yeah. you. Thank you. You have great energy. Love it. So and I and people have been basking in your energy for like an hour and they're like they love you. They love you, of course. I love you guys. I can feel it. Thank you for sticking around for this hour. Yes. I know. It being... went by like boom, right? Yep. Definitely. Uh thank you so much, Irina, for doing the show. You are delightful and amazing and super talented and and so generous to give us TikTok advice to all of us. <laughs> uh, right now it's free, but you know, I might start charging for it. I'm just saying. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Grace, if you have any questions, call me. I will coach you personally. Marty, if you want to get on TikTok, you can make it really big too. Yeah, yeah definitely. Oh, Marty. There's, oh, a, yeah. there's a place on TikTok for everyone. There That's is what some people don't realize. And uh, yeah, I, I, I encourage and highly recommend. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, university. University. <laughs> uh, Joe is saying thank you for a great show. Thank you, Joe, for tuning in and always being a faithful um, listener you, and 
yeah, uh, I am someone. Let's see. <laughs> Marty. Someone. Marty is very famous, by the way. Okay. Marty is, was on America's Got Talent. Yes. And he is a recognizable comedian who gets stopped on the streets to give autographs. If Marty goes on TikTok, I mean, he might just break it. <laughs> yeah, I think so. I think he would. I, I accidentally clicked this, but I love it. You should charge people 6000 a semester. Oh, but then I'll have to show my boobs and my husband's not going to like that. Oh, um, no, no, no. For TikTok. For TikTok. No, I'm just I'm just saying, if you're charging $6,000 a semester. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like, I don't know, who's going to pay that kind of money for just TikTok or device. You never know. You never know. But I'm saying it sounded like my OnlyFans. I posted a TikTok just making fun of feet, like thinking about starting. <laughs> yeah. Now all this feet place is hitting me up. No. Like all this fetish <laughs> websites, they're sending me messages like, would you want to promote our website? We will pay you like whatever for a TikTok. If you post, it's only feet. I'm like, no, that was a joke. <laughs> that was, that was, I was joking. Like, you guys, you're commenting. This is so cool because we're never going to leave. Um, just tell the guys in the audience at the seminar, act like you've seen a pair of boobs. <laughs> <laughs> I do all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Oh, thank you. We're going to close on this because this is like, this is a great show. Thank you, Irina. Every Sunday is an adventure learning so much more about the world from this show and the amazing guests it has had on it. Thank you, Nate. Oh, uh -huh. all right, girl. I hate to go, but. <laughs> I know it's been fun. It's um, been so love fun. you guys. Thanks for being here. Thanks for uh, listening and watching. And um, all the best, Grace. I'm going to see you on TikTok. Oh, definitely. I, I will. I know yeah. I will. You will. <laughs> I need a couple more steps. <laughs> we'll get there. We'll get there. I know, definitely. All right, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. And I'll see you next weekend, next Sunday at 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Bye. Bye.